This screencast is going to start with the French and Indian War, the background, and then we'll get into the Albany Plan of Union. So if you kind of remember, just a little geography lesson, um, the French and the British are both colonizing different parts of North America during this time period. So we know the 13 colonies are developing along the east coastline of North America. Um, France is present in northeastern regions uh, like Canada, specifically Quebec. They're also colonizing down the center part of the present day U.S. since they claimed the Mississippi River. So imagine, you know, to the east of the Mississippi River, but to the west of the east coast, like in the present day U.S., that region is going to become a source of conflict um, between these two countries, and that region is called the Ohio River Valley. They're both kind of starting to spread into that region, and that's just going to bring about some territorial conflict. So as tensions kind of con um, continued between the two countries, um, and conflict was kind of continuing, Benjamin Franklin, a very prominent um, colonist and en enlightened thinker, okay, an enlightened man, kind of embracing uh, ideas from the Enlightenment era, he's going to propose this plan called the Albany Plan of Union to unite the colonies um, and to protect themselves and each other against the French. He basically thinks they need to unite together, form one kind of union um, to be a sole force that would protect against the, any sort of French attack. This is going to stress the importance of colonial unity, but the colonies are actually going to reject this idea and so does England um, back at home. Uh, each kind of feared the loss of authority. Uh, think about the fact that England is maybe afraid of the colonies becoming too closely bound together because then they'd be a stronger force to potentially rise up against England one day, kind of foreshadowing the future there. But the colonies don't really want to give any individual control over to like a higher body. So they're kind of afraid of um, the idea of like, if joining together means they have to give up some of their individual sovereignty, they're not really a fan of that. So overall, Ben Franklin's idea does get rejected. Um, at this point, they just kind of, you know, think of themselves not as American, but as Virginian or North Carolinian or Pennsylvanian. You know, they don't, they don't think of themselves as a united front just yet. Even though they won't unite now, we are seeing that some of the colonists, like Ben Franklin, are starting to see the potential for a united, you know, colonies and not such a segmented um, situation. So the French and Indian War will be fought, though. Um, and just to be clear here, this event is the French and Indian War, this war between France and England. The reason it's called the French and Indian War is not because the French and the natives are going to fight each other. They are going to fight uh, together against the British. Okay, so this is the war in which France and England are fighting over territory in the Americas. And the natives are just aligned with the French side. So that's why it's called the French and Indian War. So they do fight um, for several years, and eventually this war will end with a treaty called the Treaty of Paris, 1763. Now, I do need you to write that date down because the year 1763, because sometimes there will be, well, we'll see, and actually in this whole unit, there are like three different treaties of Paris. So we need to distinguish them by the year in which they were signed. So this treaty that ends the French Indian War is called the Treaty of Paris, 1763. And I'm going to list some of the stipulations of this treaty now, but you can also look at the map on your screen to show you what I'm physically talking about in terms of territory division. So because the British will win, the French, unfortunately, per the treaty, have lost their empire in North America. England gets all former French territory such as Canada um, and all of the land to the east of the Mississippi River. Okay, so England is going to end up with Canada and all of the land east of the Mississippi River. 
um, including parts of Spanish Florida. We'll, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, well, you know, it, it's inaccurately drawn really on this map that it's all British territory. Only parts of um, Spanish Florida are going to end up in English in English control for now, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Spain, the, well, first off, the reason that England even got any of Florida is because Spain was helping the French as well. Remember, the French, the Spanish and the British really don't like each other at all. Um, so the Spanish had kind of sided with the French a little bit, and they ended up with a little piece of the pie. That's kind of like an added note, not that important for you to know at this time. So England has everything to the east of the Mississippi. Spain, remember, was colonizing the western portions of the U.S. and Mexico. They are going to define their territory as everything to the west of the Mississippi River. This is the first time we're seeing the river being used as a division of British versus Spanish or another European country's territory. Okay, so England gets everything to the east of the Mississippi. Spain gets to con control and maintain control of everything west of the Mississippi River, plus the city of New Orleans. That's kind of key because that's going to come into the picture later with the Louisiana Purchase. Spain was able at this point to control the port city, the important port city of New Orleans, which you know sits on both sides of the river. All right, so that's the result of the French and Indian War. England has gotten far more territory than they once had um, beyond just those 13 colonies. If you look at all on the map, they had the kind of bright yellow. Now they have that more orangey color in the middle. They have Canada, and they have control of the Ohio River Valley um, that they were fighting over. So they've definitely doubled their um, holdings in North America. Now, the natives are not pleased about the results of this war because they do not like the land-greedy British. Um, they very much feel that um, they can't trust the British, and, and remember their relationships with England were much more hostile than they had with um, France as a whole. So there's going to be a rebellion in which the Native American chief named Pontiac is going to lead a rebellion against the British. And this event is called Pontiac's Rebellion. Um, and it's kind of in a response to their winning all this new territory. Well, the British are going to be able to put down this rebellion, but they come to a peace agreement between the two parties, between this specific Native tribe and um, King George III, who is the current um, King of England. And we do need to know his name just throughout the chapter because he's going to be coming up a lot in the story. King George III is going to issue something called the Proclamation Line of 1763. And you can actually see this line established on the PowerPoint um, slide because you see the purple line that's like marking out the present day um, or the what were the 13 colonies, okay? And essentially what's going to happen is the king is going to order that colonists are not allowed to settle west of that line. And he uses the geographic boundary that's present there, which are the Appalachian Mountains. He uses those mountains as the, like, border. So, like, he basically tells all of his subjects in the colonies, like, no British colonist is allowed to settle west of those uh, mountains and west of that line. He's trying to avoid future conflict with the natives. So the natives will be happy that they can settle west of the line and the colonists can't follow them. But this makes the colonists very angry because they just fought and won this land from France. They were fighting the French over this territory. It was partially because they were trying to expand in that direction in the first place. So now they're being told they can't. They are just not going to be happy with their king about this whatsoever. Um, so this is kind of creating tension between the colonies and um, the monarchy in England. But this is only going to get worse as time goes on. But it all did start with this one big war. So please write down any questions you have, and we'll continue with these notes tomorrow. So have a good day.